Welcome everyone to Marketing 15. These are marketing priorities when you only have a minuscule budget to work with. And number one, when it comes to market with a minuscule budget would be public relations. Next to that, in, and part of that is influencer marketing, dealing with YouTube and, and bloggers and vloggers, um, niche publication marketing. That's where you get articles written about you. Uh, social media marketing is in that. Uh, then search engine optimization, getting yourself on that first page of search results, because that's where 85% of all people go. They Most people, 85% never even leave the first page. Promoting your top three, top five, because people look for best trails, top hiking, all of those kinds of things. And that means your website, social media channel. So these are the very, very, very most important things when you're marketing with a minuscule budget. But I'm not going to go over those two things because we have a whole section on public relations. And we did a video on promoting your top three, top five. And so with this, I'm going to bring to you three great ideas that you can use. They don't mean these have to be your number one, two, and three. These are just three great ideas you can use when you have a limited marketing budget. And of course, everybody everywhere is slightly different. So here we go. Number one is reach out to niche market YouTubers. You can't believe how powerful this is. Remember, if you're promoting tourism or even downtowns, photography, videography is a great way to capture people. They want to see what it's like, what it feels like. And so this is really, really important. And these are niche markets that have big followings. I mean, fishing, hunting, mountain biking, RVers, all these that you see coming up. You're going to see those asterisks there. And these are, and some of them are specific type of activities, and some of them are more like family, kid friendly destinations, those types of things. And by the way, when they go fishing, people will look for trout fishing or walleye or perch or bass. And so when it comes to fishing, not just general, what are you known for? But these are groups that have big followings on YouTube where people go to YouTube and say, wow, they must have something about fishing in Montana or Georgia or somewhere. And so these are ones with big groups they are easy to tap into because they're looking for places to send their followers. So for instance, if I just typed in RV destination, see top RV, uh, top eight RV trips, top seven RV trips in 10 days, the best state parks. I mean, we could keep going down. <coughs> excuse me and so these are easy to find there and also you can when you go to these you can click on their website so for instance there was one on this list um, done by Driven and Vibin, a youtube channel that i've actually seen before and so i clicked on it, it says 20 unique rv destinations but if you notice something right down there, it actually gives you your website. So I'm saying, how do you reach out to these people? It's hard to reach out on YouTube. You don't want to just reach out in the comment section. But almost all of them have an accompanying website. And if you go to that website, there it is. Contact us right there, driving and vibing. Now, one thing that's really important, when you reach out to people on YouTube, make sure you use their name. So if you watch their channel, they'll tell you it's Kyle and Olivia Brady. So when you email them, don't just say, hey, driving and vibing. We hope you'll come to our community sometime. Say, hey, Kyle and Olivia, we really enjoy your videos and make sure you've seen some so you know what they're about. So let's see if they can do a good job and say, by the way, next time you're in North Dakota, would you, we'd love to have you explore our area. It's really an undiscovered area. I think your, your viewers would love it. And I can, we can send you some video just so you can see what we're dealing with, with RV parks in their case or fishing, whatever it is, but you can help say, we'll help you. We can even get you free camping or if there's any incentives, that would be great. So always reach out to them and use their names. Almost always you will know their names. And so there it is, driving and vibing at gmail.com. So you could reach out to them and other influencers. Now, when it comes to RVs and even fishing, you'll find some channels that 
are all about boats. We're looking for destination. You'll find RV channels are all about when you buy an RV, here's the gear you should have. And it's all about the actual equipment and RV. You want to use the word destinations, you know, so you find RV destinations, fishing destinations, bass fishing destinations, those types of things. And you can even narrow it down to influencers in your state or your province. And so, you know, here we go fishing. I did great fishing in British Columbia and just in YouTube. And here it is fishing for Chinook salmon in British Columbia, fly fishing, British Columbia, three great rivers. Maybe some of these are already in your area, but Tofino bottom fishing, you know, which is on the coast of Vancouver Island fishing BC presents. I didn't even realize there's a channel that's all about BC fishing wild trout in the caribou back country. So you can reach out to these people. They're always looking for new places. You know, here it is with hunting. I just did pheasant hunting in Kansas, you know, which by the way, happens to be a, a popular pheasant hunting destination, but there's all these channels and you can see they have 18,000 views, 2000 views, 3.3 thousand views for that particular video, but they may have more, far more followers than that. And so it's really great to reach out to them. And even if it's 2,000 views, still reach out to them. Everybody's trying to reach out to the people that have 300,000 followers and views. But even the 2,000 ones is a good way to start. Because remember, if you reach out to those, if 2,000 people see that video, and let's say 500 of them end up showing up. Well, those 500 are probably going to bring friends with them or family, other hunters, whatever it is, depending on the topic you're in and, and, or what you're looking for people to do. And so it's really, really great to reach out to all of these. And by the way, the ones that are trying to increase their viewership, they're the ones that are going to look for places that are undiscovered up to this point. And so, I mean, here's, you know, I did mountain biking destination. Look, 10 epic mountain biking destinations, uh, best mountain biking trips. And if you did mountain biking in Georgia or British Columbia or anywhere, you're going to find these channels. It is, and by the way, all of these things that you're seeing here don't cost any money to do. They do take time. So there's the trade-off. If you don't have time or money, you're going to be in deep guano. Because these take some time, but they don't cost any money to do. It's a great, and plus you're getting third-party endorsements, which is always more believable than you tooting your own horn. But I did great hikes in Nova Scotia. Look at this, most beautiful hike in Canada, Cape Split, Nova Scotia, which I've actually been to. It's beautiful. You know, travel Nova Scotia, look at there even there, and that's their, their provincial tourism website. 10 things to do in Nova Scotia, even though I typed in great hikes, 10 things to do showed up. So these are all great ways at a low cost to sit there or to get third-party endorsements and get more publicity and exposure. You know, I did family destinations. Look, best places to travel with kids, family-friendly places, 10 best family vacation spots in the U.S. And you can help them narrow that down. So here's 10 great places to visit in Oregon or wherever you're at. And so now what to do with all of these is look at total followers. Have you just go with me on this one? Look at total followers, views of individual videos, watch some of their videos. Like I said, then call them by name, compliment them, and then invite them, you know, offer, Hey, we'll treat you to dinner. We have B roll footage. We have drones. If you need to capture any drones, um, and if they can't, they say, you know, that's just not in our plans for the next year, 18 months. Um, then say, well, do you know anybody else that might be interested that I could reach out to? And now you can name drop them, say, hey, Kyle and Olivia from Drive and Vibe and said that you might be interested in coming to our city, our town, our county, our area, you know, and then name, so name drop them when you do that and then let them know you're going to promote their video. And one thing that's really important, you need to ask permission to edit. So for instance, we've seen many videos where they will talk about 10 destinations and you're one of the 10. So you could, you could say, hey, we'd like to edit your video and, and I'll introduce you that so-and-so went in, they did trend great, great destinations. And I'm just going to share with you one of their favorites, which happened to be where we're located. And then you could show that. 
but always you can't edit videos without their permission. They own them and make sure they approve it. Say, Hey, here's what we'd like to do. Um, and then post their video on your website. Remember, we'll still link to YouTube in the background. And so they're still getting the views. They're getting additional exposure. And what do these people want? They want more followers. They want more viewers. The more they get, the more they can monetize it. So if you help them promote, they're going to be more willing to focus on you. So promote it, promote them. And try to do one each month. If you did that, you're going to start creating some top of mind awareness or TOMA. And so that's a great thing to do. So that's you do. Number two on this list is create a space available outdoor advertising campaign. When we talk about outdoor advertising, we're talking about billboards. Now, some of you may be saying billboards would be on marketing with a minuscule budget. Well, let me explain. And let me just show you an example. I designed these for the place we're working in, Northeast North Dakota, the Rendezvous region. And we thought, man, if they could get billboards, here's why I thought it was important. Number one, the number one reason people travel is to visit friends and family. You know what? Some of your best marketing could be to your local residents. When friends and family visit you, where do you take them? So we thought in that area, if people, even locals, commuters, so forget tourism, talk about local commuters, they see top five biking trails, rendezvousregion.com. Number one, we alerted the local residents that really don't have anything to play with tourism. Other, when they have friends and family come in, they don't even think it's about tourism. But if they're commuting and they're seeing these billboards, they might go top five biking trails, rendezvous region. What the heck? And they're, they're going to go check it out because they're curious of what you are saying are the top five biking trails. Now, when we do this, what you're doing is space available. You know, billboards can be $500 a month. We've seen them that way. We've seen them at $10,000 a month in urban areas. But what you want to do is if there's space available, let's say they're between campaigns. So for instance, there's Altru right there. Care for one another, keep this community you know, going. You know, you see Amish Gallery there. These are a couple of billboards. You can see the mud in the foreground. Somebody went off the road there. But in the case, you may say, well, hey, we like that Altru board or the Amish Gallery board. If one of those becomes available. So let's say they run a three-month campaign and there's a month between those three months and when the next person is running the billboard, a lot of times they will give you that space because you are promoting the public good. You are trying to promote tours for the reason. You're not a private business in this case, or even if you're a downtown association. So a lot of times they'll give it to you for free. And these days, in the old days, billboards were all hand painted. These days, billboards have wraps. So you can actually take it off and then put it on. As long as the billboards are the same size, they can remove and put it on. And that way the billboards just not sitting vacant for a month. And so in this case, take a look at this, by the way, because yellow pulls the eye. Notice that all true one before, after. Notice how yellow pulls the eye always. And by the way, never more than 14 words on a billboard. Never more than 14. Eight or fewer is actually best. But if they could do this even for a month, and it might be $500, can you imagine the number of impressions they would get? And impressions is how many people are going to see this billboard in a month. So they don't say, well, how many unique visitors and all of that it might be. And by the way, even with commuters, local commuters, the rule of uh, is seven times before people remember. If they see something seven times, they will remember it. So if they drive by every time after, after, and maybe they're going to and from work, and so they'll see it on their way to work every time after a week and a day or a week and a couple of days, they have seen it seven times. And now they're going to remember Rendezvous Region. And they're going to know about your research, where to find the top five paddling lakes. And when you do those top three, top five, you know what it does? It teases them and say, I wonder what they're saying, because this is local. You want to know which lakes are they promoting and for what? You know, so these are all the kinds of things you could do. But this is a space available campaign. And by the way, when we go back to some of these, let me go back. And you can see on these down there below, it says Newman. 
So almost every billboard company will say Newman or, or whatever company it is. In this area of, of North Dakota, there were three billboard companies and, and you just reach out to all of them. And so, and what you want is space available and maybe you'll get it for free, you know? And once your budget starts to beef up, then you say, we'll reciprocate. Now we'll, we'll actually pay for some. So keep it simple. No more than 14 words. Tease them with top three, top five. So use downtime, unused inventory between campaigns. You're doing this for the public good to increase local spending, to get people to live there, to move there. Um, you name it. Consider a co-op program. And I'm going to show you how you could pay for your billboards at no cost. And that is in marketing, the next marketing one that you're going to see about co-op or partnership marketing. And so a lot of times I'll go down highways and I'll see billboards like this. You reach out to them and just say, hey, you got a billboard that's vacant there. We'll pay to, to create the wrap, which might be three, $400. But then once you have that wrap, they can put it on any billboards of the same dimensions almost anywhere. So this whole billboard idea is a great, great way to do it. And here it is once again, where I just said, there it is, it's Newman. So you just Google Newman and they'll tell you how many people are driving by, northbound, southbound, east, west, whichever direction. They'll tell you the number of impressions and just say, and then you just tell them, say, hey, we don't have much of a budget, but we're really trying to beef tourism here. And the more tours we get, the more likely we are to actually be able to afford to buy billboards. So you're doing something for the public good for the public economy. It's a great, great campaign. Now, this doesn't mean I'm a proponent of putting billboards everywhere. But if they're there, you might as well take advantage of them. And that brings me to our third one, which is recruiting regional clubs and organizations. You know, I tell people all the time, wouldn't it be great if you had lots of events in your community, but you producing events, I mean, you know, it takes almost all year to produce one event. So I've shared this story before, but I think it is bare, it bears repeating. And, and you could even have a high school class, college class, or whatever help you with this. So I was working in Solvang, California, a town of about 5,000 people. It's a Danish town. And there was this car show going on. Look at all the people in this photograph, as far back as you can see. And so I was walking around in Solvang, and all these people were there. There was classic cars everywhere. And then I ran into this little plaque that says, First Annual Solvang Wheels and Windmills Car Show. So I went over to the Chamber of Commerce, <coughs> excuse me, and I asked, you know, could you put me in touch with, with whoever is in charge of this event? So she said, sure. And we went out walking. We eventually found him. And she goes, I'll just leave you two alone. So I went to him and I said, so you notice this is the first annual Wheels and Windmills car show. Why did you pick Solvang? And I thought they were going to say, oh, because it's a cute Danish town and it's already a tourism town or the route here is great for cars. You know what they said? They, their tourism organization, sent us a half page letter inviting us. They just sent us a letter and said, hey, if you're ever looking for a place to, to host your car show, we hope you'll look at Solvang. We have some great roads, driving routes from the major metro areas to get you here. They give them like three reasons why. And so I said, so did they pay you to come here? And he goes, no, all they did is send the letter. I said, but did they say they would give you anything? He said, yes, they said they would close off three blocks of Main Street. They'd put up the partitions and, and they would put up welcome signs. I said, that's it. What about the porta potty? He says, oh, we did that. I said, who did all the marketing? We did all the marketing. And I said, so when did it start? I was there like on the weekend. I said, well, we got here Thursday afternoon. And, and then we, our car shows going Friday, Saturday, and Sunday till about two. And I said, but there's all these vendors there. He says, we did all of that. And all the marketing, everything. He says, yeah, we handled everything. And I said, so how many people are bringing here? He says, well, today we have about 10,000. And two thirds of them are spending the night. And I said, so how's it going? And they said, it's been great. I said, will you do it again? He goes, yeah. Yeah, we've already booked this weekend for the next 10 years. You know what? You know how much this costs? And they did this with car clubs, with quilt guilds, with pottery guilds, you name it. 
they spend about $200 in mailing costs out to all these nonprofits and clubs and organizations. That included stationery, putting up welcome signs. I mean, it is now a popular event destination. <coughs> and what's cool is they didn't have to produce the events. They have outsiders doing the events for them. Wouldn't that be cool if you could bring in 40 or 50 weekends full of events? So here's what you do. You develop a database of regional clubs and organizations. I'm going to show you how you can do this for free. Go to guidestar.org, guidestar, connecting with the nonprofit information. And a lot of the nonprofits might be social services and stuff. But what you can do is go in there. And I just typed in car clubs and notice over to the left, I've typed in state of Georgia. It turns out under car clubs, there's 2,435 of them. You can see Memories Car Club, Buccaneer Region, Sports Car Clubs, Dolanega. Gee, why can't I do that? It's a, a popular place. Dolanega Car Club, Holiday Rambler, Recreational Vehicle Club. So there's RVs showed up in there. And what you can do with any of these is I can go click on it, Northwest Georgia Region Antique Automobile Club, and it says gross receipts, zero assets, zero. A lot of these are volunteers. It doesn't matter. And you can click on it. And so you can, do, you can look for it and it'll give you contact information. So in this case, I did quilting clubs in Georgia. There's 2,441 quilting clubs. But you're wondering what words to look for. And I also, so you can see it right there, but you could also look for quilt guilds or quilting guilds. And in this case, there is, you know, I did that and there's 110 guilds. And I thought, well, let's start with 110 guilds rather than 2,400 quilting clubs. Start with the guilds are probably a little larger. They might have some budget. They might actually do quilt shows. You'd be surprised how far people will come for a quilt show. And so you start with those 110. So you can use different words to figure out how to find them in this enormous database. You know, so you can borrow club, you go to a Kiwanis or, or Rotary or any local organization, a chamber commerce board, say, hey, does any of you belong to a motorcycle club, a car club, a quilt guild? Which one do you belong to? And maybe they can open the doors for you. I mean, if you, BMW magazine is worldwide. But then in the United States, they have Roundell for every BMW owner. But if you go into the Seattle area, you'll find Zoomfolds. So you could go to Zoomfolds and say, man, I wonder what they're doing. Get a copy of their newsletter. A lot of them are online. Look at this from Seattle. Reason to visit your Canadian club neighbors in August. See what I mean? So they're actually going from Seattle up into British Columbia. How cool is that? And you know what? All the people did in BC is invite them. You know, Cannon Beach, by the way, Cannon Beach is on the Oregon coast. So this is Seattle going out of state with their BMWs. And they'll have hundreds of them. They'll fill hotel rooms, you name it. <coughs> and then Mountain Twisties Drive Recap through the Cascades. These are organizations that are looking for places where their members could carpool there. You know what I mean? It's create a chain of cars to hold host events. I mean, Mercedes has them. This is Mercedes in the Seattle area. You know, Leavenworth weekend, they went from Seattle across the mountains to Leavenworth. So they could go to Leavenworth or Camino Island, which is like an hour north of Seattle. All of these, it doesn't cost anything. They're looking for places to send their club members. So classic cars, motorcycle clubs, quilters, <coughs> fishing shows, derbies, fishing derbies. Dragon Boat, other paddling clubs, there's biking clubs, you name it. They're all looking for places to send their club members, their enthusiasts. So in closing, reach out to niche group YouTube channels. It does take some time. Just say, hey, I'm going to set aside four hours one day a week just to do that. Dedicate the time to do it. Or call Billboard and say, hey, you know, and design billboards that are easy to read. They're not going to put something that looks like a magazine ad out there because it won't be effective for you. And they won't have that endorsement from you talking about how great it was. And so 
invite clubs and organization. These are three things you can do with a minuscule budget, a little time that will really further your marketing efforts. And next up in this series is Marketing 16, How to Create Marketing Partnerships.